What's up guys, Justin here with the renderingessentials.com. So in this video, we're gonna highlight one of the updates to the camera feature that makes creating better, more cinematic shots a lot easier. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in this new version, you can go into your preferences right here. And specifically, we wanna go into the widget section right here. And we wanna activate the advanced camera tool beta version. So this says limited free, um, which means at the moment, this is a free function. I don't know if this is going to be a function that's added to the paid version or not. Um, there are a lot of cool things contained inside of that version. So uh, I'll link to a discounted version of that in the notes down below if you do wanna check that out. But for now, what you can do is you can toggle this on like this and you can add an advanced camera. And specifically, that's gonna allow you to customize aspect ratios and adds a picture in picture window. So let's say we're working in this example render space right here, right? And so it's a pretty cool space. And what we wanna do is let's fly over to where all of the people are over here. And what we wanna do is we wanna create a camera that kind of like flies through this space. But we also want to um, get an idea of how the lighting changes and environment changes and other things like that are going to affect us. So what I want to do is I want to click on this button right here and I want to add a new camera. So when I do that, what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to click in here and that's going to let me create a camera view that's going to give me a picture in picture. And so what that means is that means that this camera is now a three-dimensional object or an object living in the three-dimensional space where you can actually adjust and move around. And so this is helpful for both video as well as, um, as, well as still images because you can get kind of an idea of what changes are going to do. Notice if I change this, right? If I fly through like this, this picture in picture is actually going to adjust. That's actually super helpful um, because what that's gonna do, and notice how if I like rotate it, that's gonna change as well. That's super helpful because that means that I can keep an eye on what changes are happening over here while I'm still working in another part of the building. So let's say that I was to fly back over here. Right, and so what I wanna do is I wanna use some of the curated presets in order to get a look at what my overall is going to look like, but I also want to keep an idea of what this camera is going to look like. So what I can do is I'm gonna go into my space, I'm gonna use one of these curated environments. So maybe we'll use the exterior sunny and bring that into our scene. Well, notice how that is going to change the lighting of my entire scene, right? It's gonna change the lighting out here, but I can also see the changes that it made over here like this. Notice how that goes away. By the way, if you click off of it, if you select this and then click on the little pin right here, then it's gonna pin it in place. So that's always going to be there um, until you toggle that back off. Um, but now I can make changes over here, make adjustments over here, other things like that. Now, let's say that we were to add another camera. So I want to add a new camera. I don't wanna do that right here, right? So I'm gonna create a camera view right here. And we're going to set this one and kind of rotate it so that we get this kind of like upward look, right? So just something like this, nothing ultra complicated or anything like that. Um, but now I've got a second camera in here um, that I can also view, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and click on the pin button right here. Now notice that you can switch between cameras just by clicking on them, right? So if I click in here, I can look at this view, I can look at this view, no problem. You can also filter over here for your different cameras, right? So you can see them. You could also rename them, right? So I could name this one large space, this one small space. All right, so I can see both of those cameras. I can also, if I want to jump to one of those views, I can click on this and it's going to move me to that view right here. So that is also especially helpful because it's going to quickly move me back and forth between my different cameras if you have a bunch of cameras in the space. So that by itself is definitely really cool. Um, note that you can also still click 
on these cameras over here in order to get them to pop up. Okay, and so at least at the moment, um, I don't think this supports actually keyframing the camera objects themselves. Um, that's definitely a feature I'd like to see in the future, but um, like for example, you know, and so if you have a model, right, there's an option to like keyframe movement. I'm not seeing an option for that with your individual cameras right here. So I think this is something that maybe is a little bit more for stills at the moment. And so it would be nice to be able to kind of like keyframe that camera movement so that you could move it around like an object. But this is still, at least to me, extremely cool because I can just jump back and forth between my different camera views and see what my changes are actually doing to this whole thing, right? So for example, if I was to adjust this right here, you can see how I'm going to get a different look. So we can use this in order to quickly see how that's going to affect not only our viewport, but also our camera in basically real time. But then once you wanna render this, right? If I click in here in my render image mode, notice how this is gonna come in here and this is going to automatically adjust your aspect ratio in here so that you can actually create that rendering. But now if I click on render, That's gonna let me save a rendered image and it's gonna render that particular camera view in here. And then if I open that image, it's gonna look something like this. So you can use this to quickly set up and render camera views in D5 Render. So I like this new camera function in here. The picture in picture is great. It really gives you an idea or the ability to look at different areas all kind of at the same time when you're making changes, which I think is a massive improvement in functionality. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. If you do want to get D5 Pro at a discounted rate, you can check out that link on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.